Okay, everybody, welcome back to the garage on Christmas Day. So we're going to test a few things on Bob real quick. I got, um, I can't remember where I left off in the last video. I got all the wiring done with the exception of the air shifter and the parachute deployment solenoid. So all of the systems necessary to go down the track are actually in place as far as fuel and spark and sensors and all that kind of jazz. Uh, we didn't have the air shift before and we didn't have the air parachute deployment before. So at the very least, we're back to where we were. So today we are going to test boost control on the brake and we are going to test the secondary set of 16 injectors to make sure that they are coming on like they're supposed to. So what I've done is I have adjusted the percentage table in which they actuate or in which they start working. So I'm going to turn the camera around, show you guys that table and how it works. And then we're going to warm Barb, Barb. We're going to warm Bob up and put him out in the driveway and test him out real quick. Okay. So hopefully the glare isn't too bad. Uh, as you can see, custom injector fuel table. This is the second set of injectors. And this is the amount of duty cycle that they will um, put out. So down here in the red, there's no boost, and this is 0%. And then up here in high boost, in the blow shit up area, this is 50% duty cycle. And you adjust the table on the second set of injectors, and then it will in turn, if you go over here to the first set, it will automatically change them to match the duty cycle. So you see down here, the primary injectors are running 100% and then up here they're 50% in between here is more or less interpolated. So the only thing we're going to test on the boost control is this uh, trans brake launch um, area right here, which is five PSI is all I have on the gate. So we'll test that out. You know what, let's bump it up a little bit. We're gonna make that, um, let's make that 10. Right there, there we go, okay. So we're gonna test that. We're gonna make sure that we're getting 10 PSI on top of the wastegate via the dome sensor. And once we do that, everything is gonna be good. Um, the reason why we're testing boost control, I think we did it once already. They're testing it again to make sure that the engine sees enough boost to get up into the area where the secondary injectors are actually going to start working. So I would expect that Bob may stumble and cough a little bit once he gets up there in the boost uh, when the secondary injectors start coming on. But uh, you got to start somewhere. Rome wasn't built in a day, right? So let's get him warmed up and test it out. All right, we've already got the changes loaded in Bob, so let's fire him up and see if we can get him warmed up. Because he is a, kind of a cold-natured guy when it comes to this... Uh, methanol thing. Okay, I got the data logs downloading. Um, as you saw there, Bob is uh, ready to go. The boost control, I've already looked at one of the data logs, actually kind of cheated a little bit, but anyways, uh, one of the data logs looks good, um, or the, the important data log, I should say. Uh, looks good. The secondary injectors are actually working like they are supposed to, which is definitely a good sign because Bob would not make it very far down the track or very long on the dyno if that second set of injectors was not injecting. 
So uh, give me a second. I'm gonna get the other day log uh, pulled up and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so I got the data log pulled up. I'm gonna turn the camera around, check this out. So what you're looking at there, the green line is the primary set of injectors or actually just one of them. The purple line is the secondary set of injectors or just one of those. And the red line represents RPM. So with the way that the injectors are phased in, let's bring that other table up so we can look at it. So we go over here to fuel and then custom injectors. You can see this is the primary set of injectors right here. You can see right there where the cursor is that that dude is running 100 percent and as it starts to climb boost it's 96, 91, 87, somewhere around there. And we'll look at the second. Okay it is the next day, the day after Christmas and the camera died in the middle of explaining how those fuel tables work but you get the idea. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a little changing on the way the engine comes up on boost. Now I'm going to show the data log. I'll wait until we, after we do this test so you can see what I'm talking about side by side. But we're going to pull some timing out of the engine while it's coming up on boost because right now what is happening is as the engine climbs the RPM and reaches the limiter, and it's flatlining on the limiter, the boost is still climbing all the way out here to the end um, until I let off the gas. And that usually means one of two things, uh, that it needs a lot of launch RPM to get to that boost that you're trying to do, or it needs some help getting there early. Um, so we're going to help it get there early by way of timing. So I'm gonna turn the camera around, show you what the timing table changes look like, and then we're gonna test it out. So this is pretty standard issue stuff. I've added a 1D timing table that is enabled, switch enabled, when the trans brake is on and TPS is above 50%. And what it's doing is it's pulling out timing down to 20 degrees in these boost ranges. So starts around two pounds of boost, up to around 10 or 11, 12 pounds of boost, it drops to 20 degrees, and then back up, the higher it goes, the less timing that gets pulled out of it. So no better time than the present to write those changes to the car and test it out. Okay, so you saw two different tests there. The first test I did twice in a row, and that was boosting the car up with no timing retard, no help, no nothing of any kind, and it makes somewhere in the neighborhood of about 10 pounds boost. And that is with, wow, my phone's blowing up. That is with 10 pounds of air pressure on top of the dome. The second test you saw is the same exact test the same stats the same 10 psi of dome pressure the same launch rpm limit the only difference is ramping the timing out like i showed you in the previous clip so the change uh in the data log and my phone is still blowing up the change in the data log is pretty substantial i'm going to turn the camera around and show you what it did and well let's talk about it okay first things first this is we don't want to see this one first. I want to show you the other one first. So let's do that. Open a comparison data log. And Christmas Day boost up. All right. Now, I'm going to go right here. Blow this up real good so we can see it. Okay. The solid lines are the first, or actually the second test. And the dotted lines are the first two tests, or and actually it's the second attempt on the first test. So, now, let's look at the important stuff. So we're going to turn everything off 
over here so we can see just the big boy stuff. Now, what we are looking at is the green line is throttle position. The dark blue line, uh, we don't care about that either. We do, let's turn that off. Okay. So there you go. There is the two different tests. Throttle position. The one I stayed in considerably longer, um, mainly just to test, uh, to see if it got any, any different. So, first attempt right there is... 10.6 pounds of boost at the same point in the test on the second attempt that is 13.5 pounds of boost so you can see right there the thing to note is that it's the exactly the same amount of time so let's look at why it does that so if we go back over here and we're going to turn the ignition on ignition timing on and the boost builder which is a timing retard You'll see there the yellow line is the normal timing and where it starts to come out as the boost goes up Which is right here Okay, and the turquoise colored line is the boost builder as it drops the timing so you can see right there It is pulling one degree And we go over here. It's pulling almost 20 degrees 19.3 degrees out of it At that point it is already starting to change the amount of boost that it makes 9 psi versus 8.4 and as you go further that is 11.4 and 9.2 13.3 and 10.5 and it just gets worse uh, from there so that's the first attempt right there that's the only the only the time that i've tested that uh, on this setup now I feel like I can improve it because, well, it's the first test and you never get it right the first time, right? So I think that if I get a little more aggressive pulling the timing out of it early, uh, that it will build boost even faster. Um, this is with also with no additional fuel or anything like that. So we got that stuff to try out. But the cool thing is, is that that thing is seeing 14 pounds of boost in about three seconds. Um, that's good. That's really good. So... This video is probably getting to be pretty close to 10 minutes. I think that's a good place to end it. We'll call it quits for this one. The next one is going to be the cool, cool, cool stuff. We're going to put the car on the dyno. Um, well, you know how that, get, that is. Uh, everybody likes to see the power. So we're going to put it on the dyno, test it out, see what it's got now that everything is working 100%. And I guess we'll go from here. So thanks everybody for stopping by. I appreciate it, guys. We will see you in the next video. Remember, dino time. And uh, be sure to check it out.